Well, good afternoon. We're so glad for all the hundred children who have joined. We won more again for zooming in on sustainability. I the Queen Quet Head from the body of the Gullah Geechee Nation. So glad that hundred to tune in with we won more again right here. Today, we want to crack we teeth about Gullah Geechee and social responsibility. Before we go on into that, I want to make sure we do what we do every week right here. We just yet to snap say they finally the work on things for sister Brianna Taylor, God bless the dead. So this year they want to dedicate this year program to she and also to Dr. Yusuf and Clyde, who've been one of the founding or inaugural Wisdom Circle Council elders members for the Gullah Geechee Nation, who've been a human rights defender for decades before he left we right here for defend we own self. So this year day. Let me take a moment of silence. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I'm so glad that Hunter Children are tuning in one more again. We done make them to the 18th episode of Zooming In on sustainability and things like that. So if Hunter and I know where I be, I be right here in the Gullah Geechee Nation. The Gullah Geechee Nation star in Jacksonville, North Kakalaki, working with all the way down Jacksonville, Florida. And Compass will hunt and see right behind me. These are what we call the Sea Islands. And then 30 to 35 miles inland to the St. John River. Now, I've hunted yet about that for now. You might get about that back yonder. When this shut thing been way, that thing y'all yet about called 40 acres and a mule, start up at. Because this year they the same land from Charleston. All the abandoned rice fields southward to Ferndina, out of Florida. All this year been supposed to be broke up into 40 acre blocks, distributed out to the quote Negroes. No whites should dwell therein unless in military service and occupation. Because that special field order number 15, William Tecumseh Sherman issued that where Big Shoot been going on when the US Civil War was going on. Well, some of you might say, which US Civil War? Because some of us feel like we are in a civil war right now all over again. The unfortunate reality is that we are at a very, very pivotal time, once again, in our story, in his story, and in world story. And we have to make sure that we pay close attention to whether we are full participants in the process, and if we are, in what regard. So as native Gullah Geechis, I'm calling on us to pay close attention to what is happening in the midst of a pandemic, during hurricane season, and during a voting year in the other country that we also have citizenship in. We have dual citizenship in both the Gullah Geechee Nation and the United States of America. This is also a pivotal time because many of you who have done genealogical research, you know full well that one of the things that you end up looking at and trying to find your name on, the census reports. So let's start there. Culturally, we do not count heads. There are spiritual things involved with that. Culturally, we don't count heads. But in the Western world, they do. And when they don't have a numerical value for something, they take it as no value at all. Also, when they do have numerical values at times, they can use it to either provide resources there or set up a systematic approach where they deny resources there. I am a computer scientist and mathematician by degrees. So when I'm talking to you about numbers and talking about technology and how it's used, believe me, I can program it. I can calculate it. So I'm speaking from experience as someone who has been engaged in the political arena that I despise. I despise politics, but I have to be engaged in it to ensure that my community isn't denied the resources anymore. 
but that my community is resourced. And that community being the Gullah Geechee Nation from Jacksonville, North Carolina to Jacksonville, Florida, and 30 to 35 miles inland to the St. John's River. I bring this up when I bring up the census because having served as a federal expert commissioner for the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, I was an inaugural member, but I was the person that got that ball rolling, one might say and worked with Congressman James Clyburn for nine years of my life to get that passed. One of the key questions was how many of them are there? My thing was, what difference does it make if we already told you what our needs are? You don't necessarily need to count our heads or are you trying to count us out? So with this census, we have an opportunity to set a precedent. Because if you complete the census before they shut it down this month, you need to indicate you are native Gullah Geechee on that form. That way, in the future, when somebody asks, oh, about Gullah Geechee people, they can go in historic records. The next person doing genealogy, when you dead and gone, when I'm dead and gone, they will find in the historical record, not Negro, not Black, not African American, not Afro American, but Gullah Geechee that could make a crucial difference in the future. Those who have been doing ancestral DNA, some have told me that some of the companies are providing them records saying, well, you're Gullah Geechee. I don't know how accurate that is either, but that's another argument for another day as a scientist. So now here it is that people and systems within the Western world look for ways to increase and assess value as well as to depress value. You have to value yourself and value your own community before you take responsibility for it. Because we only become responsible for that which we think there's something worthy of giving our energy to. We be Gullah Geechee anointed people, we be black gold, richness. We are the ones that built America. So right now, when we talk about voting, we have to think about the blood, the sweat, and the tears that our ancestors and elders spilled on the soil of what became the United States. And then think about that blood crying out to you that you better vote. Whether you vote by mail, whether you vote in person, all masked up, all rubbed down with as much sanitizers you possibly can amass, take your herbs before you go, but you need to vote. If not for yourself, you need to vote as a mechanism of paying homage to our ancestors who were denied the right to vote, but yet they counted to allow others to be able to vote. And guess what? The historic legacy of the United States was that land-owning men could vote. You heard me? Land-owning white men first, then land-owning black men later could vote. And you gonna let your land go? So yeah, let's go there. Why am I doing this show today? And those who come and share this time with me on Wednesdays each week, or those of you who are watching on Gullah Geechee TV, you've been accustomed to me having others there as guests. Well, guess what? Today our guests are our ancestors who spoke out and said, y'all going to let them do this show? Y'all going to throw we we throw we all the way we don't walk for? Y'all live for Y'all live for us dear. Y'all live for us young. We shall be one of the kind. We left this year for Hunter Diddy. So now here it is, our ancestors are crying out, saying, you gonna let your land get auctioned that our blood, sweat, and tears is in? You gonna put us back on an auction block? How dare you? You hear the song, God, why trouble the water? Ain't just God. that just troubling that water. They shut down my ear. We are still in a hurricane season. We got till November 1st to be in a hurricane season. 
But the swirls coming from the motherland to here are not just doing them dry, long soap. It's to get our attention. It's to still vindicate and right wrongs that happened during the crime against humanity that we call the transatlantic slave trade, that we call chattel enslavement. During the period that the US Civil War went on, that others call the war of brother against brother, that Southerners tend to still call the war of Northern aggression. We shoot, would have been a going on. Our ancestors took up arms to fight to prove they had a right to the tree of life. They had a right to be called men and women because there were women in that battle too. There were women that were nurses and teachers, but there were soldiers like Mother Moses, Harriet Tubman. There were scouts that stood, that helped those men to stand, that healed those bodies, that kept them going out young. But yet some died and they died fighting for freedom. And they wanted a place and a space for their people to be able to live as free people. So therefore, during the Civil War, after the Confiscation Act that Lincoln sent down, who bid that time? It was our ancestors bidding this time, not being sold, being the ones purchasing land. You don't even know how you got the heir's property. All you know, you got left something. And now you fight your own family members over it, which is all the other folk want you to do so that you lose the land in court because then the judge forces a partition sale. Or I ain't gonna pay the tax because the rest of them ain't paying the tax. Well, don't nobody pay the tax. And then the state, the county confiscates the land and then the county make the money when the auction come up. And now you have nothing to leave to the next generation. The whole legacy is gone. Why do I bring it up now? Because the first Monday in October is when land auctions are happening. You got a week left, you got some days left. We on a countdown that if you have not yet paid land taxes in the Gullah Geechee Nation and hunted the Gullah Geechee like a me, Please go pay those taxes, them penalties, and them fees that you don't let accrue on there. Then you need to find out what the form is. In Florida, they have payment plans. In Beaufort County, South Carolina, we have payment installment plan, it's called. So you don't have to wait to pay the lump sum. You pay every two months a piece on it. For some of y'all, even if you got the whole amount of money, you ain't going to pay it all at one time. You will pay it piecemeal. You're better off to pay the whole thing and get it over and done. And listen to me. Think about the numbers. If you got a tax bill that was $250 and you didn't pay it up to now, and now it's $1,000. If you didn't have $250, where well, you get $1,000. And why would you want to give $750 extra dollars just over to the buck on them anyway downtown? Where's the logic in that? That $750 could have been invested and improvements of the land that could have been invested in a booming stock market. It could have been invested in the education of your children in wealth building. We have a social responsibility to not only the generation that was ahead of us, many of whom are deceased or elderly now, but we have it to the generations before them. And we also have it to the generation coming behind, our children and our children's children, that we leave them a legacy. What greater legacy for Black people to leave than land? It is a revolutionary act for Black people to own land. I salute the sisters that went on and got 19 families together and purchased the land over in Georgia and say they want to set up a new Black township there where Black people can come to and feel safe. Well, let's not get too comfortable there either because for Black people to feel safe in the Gullah Geechee Nation, we've always had to bear arms to feel safe. So again, if you're going to do that, you have to do it responsibly. You have a social responsibility to realize all your rights in the Gullah Geechee Nation and through the U.S. Constitution. 
and the right to bear arms is one of those things. Yeah, I know when you were in the class history class and constitution class and government economics, some things were boring because most times the teachers were boring. But the reality is they were actually teaching you about your citizenship and your rights so that you'd be able to be good citizens, to have responsible citizens that would know the things you need to do. Fill out census, vote, hold on to your land. Because what if they go back to some kind of craziness like that again, that only certain folk can vote? They're trying to suppress the vote in the same way that they did during the Reconstruction era, the Jim Crow period of time, segregation. They did everything there was to suppress the Black vote. So we have to protest against that. We have to start to pay attention ahead of time before they redline. Ahead of time before they redline. That's why the numbers matter. You are counted in or you're counted out. And then if they realize there's too many of you, y'all remember the song, there's too much of us is dangerous, we're so dangerous, yeah. Bust the rhymes, bust this. The fact of the matter is once they get the numbers and they realize that there are too many people that are now called the BIPOC communities in one place, somehow they rezone. They redistrict. For voting, new districts, redlining. For living, rezoning. Let's talk about that. Most of you who follow the Gullah Geechee Nation at GullahGeecheeNation.com, GullahGeecheeNation.com, and Gullah is G-U-L-L-A-H. Geechee is G-E-E-C-H-E-E. -E -E. Ain't no I in Geechee for the week. If you follow GullahGeecheeNation.com, if you follow the Gullah Geechee Nation's Facebook fan page, or you follow at Gullah Geechee on Twitter and Instagram, you have been bombarded over the last month with petitions, the last few months with petitions, but in particular petitions now about zoning in Beaufort County and in Charleston County. You have seen numerous blogs, you've heard radio interviews and other things concerning zoning matters in the Gullah Geechee Nation. It is our duty to ensure that people do not lower our quality of life in the Gullah Geechee Nation by allowing further destruction of our environment. We are already combating climate change dynamics. We can't stop God from God raising the water, but we can stop our misbehavior on land that is negatively impacting water quality and air quality. So here it is. We do not have to sit back and allow people that feel they don't wear my sad. We don't have to allow people to just sit here that we have put in positions to vote on matters, to sit there and also get paid behind closed doors and then turn around and try to vote on the same issue. That's conflict of interest. So we have a situation coming up tomorrow, Thursday of this week, 5 p.m at Burton Wells Complex in Beaufort County, South Carolina, where Bay Point, who we now, and I thank all of you, thank all of you around the world, thank you, thank you, all of Gullah Geechee, chilling out there with Miss Sidem and Tormer and other rest of the people for Sidem and things like that. We have 30,336 signatures as of this morning on a change.org petition to stop the destruction at Bay Point off historic St. Helena Island. I am seated at St. Helena Island. What you see behind me, that is St. Helena Island. Bay Point looks very similar to what you see behind me. It is rapidly eroding already. We cannot sit back and allow, number one, a luxury resort of 50 units plus multiple outside buildings and other outdoor amenities to be built where our loggerhead turtles, and our horseshoe crabs deliver their babies where the Gullah Geechee fishing families have harvested their fishes, caught fish from around there for decades, for centuries, okay? And it is also an IBA. Audubon has determined it is an important bird area. One of those birds is called an oyster catcher. So what else do you think, Dave Ronald? 
but the author. Okay, so here it is that right across from Bay Point is St. Helena Island. It's a point that sticks out from St. Helena, essentially, and sits midway between Hilton Head, Paris Island, and us. We do not want septic tanks put in over there while we're in the midst of sea level rise crises and crises and where we are in a hurricane zone for those things to, they fail anyway, for those things to get inundated with water even during king tides like it's been for the past couple of weeks. And then they fail. Where do you think that sewage goes? So standing up against yet another luxury resort being built in the Gullah Geechee Nation is a matter of our human rights. It's not just our land rights and our water rights. We have the right to have the proper life, have the good life. Be like the song Duval said, living my good life. I ain't going back and forth with you. But we going back and forth on this issue because it's something we have to do. We have to stop these counties from thinking that our silence gives consent. So I'm proud of everybody who wrote a letter, who tweeted, who reposted, who signed the petitions. Even one young lady took and made a printed version and took it to the communities early on to make sure that others who did not have computers were also gonna be able to voice their opinion of why Bay Point needs to remain like it is without it becoming a resort area. For people who have the wealth to spend two to $3,000 a night to stay there and for week while they're offering the Gullah Geechee community minimum wage jobs. It is in their PowerPoint presentation. The jobs will begin at minimum wage, go to six figures. But when asked directly, who gets the six figures? Of course, they bring in their team. Their team from where? Their team from Kentucky, which one of the owners is from? Their team from where? Bangkok, Thailand, where this person from? Their team from Latin America? These are all folks who are partners in this. There are no native folk out of Beaufort that's gaining anything from Bay Point except destruction men. We've had numerous gated areas and resort places here go bankrupt. But then we as the taxpayers are saddled with bearing the burden for anything they left behind, including their destruction men, that gets in the waterway, that damages it, that harms it, that lowers the quality of life in it for our sea creatures, our fish, our oyster, the crab and thing like that, the shrimp and thing like that. I know I'm making y'all hungry now, but I hope your hunger comes for justice like mine. That's not just us, but for justice. Because here it is that at this Board of Zoning Appeal meeting, tomorrow night, 5 p.m. at the Burton Wells Complex in Beaufort, South Carolina, which is gonna be an in-face meeting, they are going to provide hand sanitizer, but you got to wear your mask to attend, and I hope you will. There's also going to be on the table a proposal to dig a sand mine on Defusky Island. Defusky Island, like Bay Point, is not even connected by a bridge or a road or anything. In both cases, you have to take what they call ferries, which are usually yacht like vessels, not no little bateau, okay? Over or come in by helicopter. So tell me what is the purpose for which someone would wanna do sand mining on Defusky? Five acres worth, a five acre hole they wanna dig in the middle of a historic district, a Gullah Geechee historic district, a national register landmark district, want to dig five acres of dirt out and then couch it as, oh, well, it'll be a beautification project. How does destruction it become beautification? Or oh, it'll be a park afterwards. If you still stay around the county and invest any money, it'll become that. Otherwise, you get the sand, you make money off the loads, and you say, oh, my company bankrupt, or I'm going somewhere else. And now they're left with this hole, which now endangers the lives of the elderly people over there, the children that are over there, the visitors that come over there. Because the alligator definitely is on the fusky. Ain't no doubt but that. Get a diddy. 
So now you're going to give them another area to produce in the middle of the historic district. And not to mention just having a hole there where somebody could end up careening off and going in it. Trust me, I stayed on the bus at nighttime. When we say dark, a pitch black dark over there in the nighttime. And no bunch of street light and a bunch of homes over there if I had no light on outdoors and things like that. So now what? So why would we need something like that? For one individual to benefit themselves financially? Similar situations going on in Hugie, South Carolina, up in near Charleston County. People have been battling for 10 years or more already to prevent a sand mine from coming in their community. We battled them off of St. Helena Island and they still snuck one in to build a Walmart and took the dirt from our island over to Ladies Island to put up there under the cover of night. Trucks and trucks and trucks leaving with all this dirt. And now people are concerned about the safety of their grandchildren and their little children that could be anywhere near where this massive pit was dug out. We are on sea islands. We live literally in the Atlantic Ocean. So if you dig down, what you think gonna come up? Yeah, no, it ain't black gold, Texas tea. This time it's the water where we be. So again, we are calling on you all to go to change.org today. You still have time and sign both the petition to stop the destruction in a Bay Point and also to tell Beaufort County to protect Gullah Geechee historic properties on Defusky from development. Y'all know I don't use that word because it's not developing anything. It's not making the picture clearer. It's not developing anything. It's not bringing it to good. It's usually tearing something down or destroying something to put something else in its place. So I call it destruction. And in these decades since I came up with that terminology, I've seen more of it than enough. And now enough is enough. We as native Gullah Geechis have a social responsibility to stand up and fight and use our voices. If Hunter say, I can't speak for Hunter then when Hunter go crack your teeth for your own self. Eh? I think I hear that. So now this is our time. This is our opportunity to stop these things where they are right now. We also have an opportunity to get ahead of another highway taking property from Gullah Geechee communities via eminent domain. And that's in Charleston County, Mount Pleasant to be exact. Seven Mile, Phillips, and then going on your honor to Ken Hart, you better wake up. A gang of people live on Ayers property. So yeah, this conversation's coming full circle. If they run Highway 41 and they've already closed down comments, direct comments on that plan. So if you didn't submit those, you can't do that again. But what you can do is you can write to Charleston County because they get to vote on what option will happen with Highway 41. They want to expand Highway 41. They want to widen it, but they never say widen. They tell you the word improvement because it's a psychological matter. Who's going to fight against something improving, right? So they give you terminology to make it sound good when in actuality it's destruction. So here it is that they want to improve, they say, Highway 41, which means widening it. And if they widen it, they have to run part of it through people's property. Whose people's property? Native Gullah Geechee's. Native Gullah Geechis, who in the paper are calling themselves everything but Gullah Geechee, and herein lies the problem. Being called African American settlements and all that, they ain't, what is that? What does that mean? Our ancestors weren't African American. They were called Black. They were called Negro. They were called Colored. They were called all kinds of things. This African American term came around in the 80s because of Reverend Jesse Jackson. Now we're back to being called Black people again. Black Lives Matter is the movement. So here it is that we are in the midst of having to recognize, do these lives matter enough that we're gonna protect the legacy of the land that these lives are on and improve their quality of life on that land? Well, we can't just keep improving the quality of life for other people while they literally run us up the road because they're running the road through your house, through your yard, 
through where your churches are, through where your burial areas are, a building over it, and then putting your picture in the museum. Let's say, look who was here. Or we gonna leave you a historic marker to say this was a gullah neighborhood like they're doing all over Hilton Head now that they have moved off the majority of the native Gullah Geechee population. So now in comes the attack into Mount Pleasant where Highway 41, there's more than one option. There's a don't do anything option. Leave it like it is. No action is what they call that. Generally, departments of transportation, DOTs, they don't do the no action because they already got a plan to act as long as the money is there. And they already collected a sales tax in Charleston, little penny sales tax, add up to millions of dollars over years because it's been more than a decade since we did the film about this and those plans were already charted out more than a decade ago, but now it's time to put the plans that were charted out into effect because they already collected the money. So what did they do? They also did the numbers, the cost benefits analysis, and they feel that it will benefit the town of Mount Pleasant more to run through Seven Mile and Phillips and remove the family compounds of the native Gullah Geechis that largely live on Ayers property. They'll be cheaper to put the highway through there because if they put the highway through the suburbanized area, it'll cost them $30 million more than to put it through the native Gullah Geechee area. Now you probably said, well, how, how, how come? What, what's that? Think about it. What did I say about values being assessed and increased or being depressed because the value of heirs property they depress it because that's largely a black community a BIPOC community a Gullah community an indigenous community they devalue that until you move out then when you move out gentrify value shoots right up so just down the road that area is already gentrified so you're talking about the value of the homes being in half a million dollar range and this kind of thing, two, 250,000, half a mil, a million. So to buy those folks out or to pay them the fair market value in exchange for their loss for their land or their property would add up to the tune of $30 million. In the case of the heirs' property, they may not end up paying anybody because nobody got a clear title. So again, it's our social responsibility to start talking to our family members, not arguing with them, not busting up on them, all of that crazy stuff. It's time to sit down, act like your mama raised you right, talk to people calmly and intelligently and stop despising the intelligence and intellect within your own communities and your own families and let some people who have some book knowledge and understanding sit with you not the outside people, because sometimes the same people who come and say they helping you, they giving the information to the lawyers who gonna get y'all out of there. But sit with your own family members and people who've been leading and fighting for this and let you get an understanding and an overstanding of these documents and these plans and how you could actually form family LLCs and so that you can have ways in which you can financially continue to benefit off the land. It's not just a situation where you just pay taxes out and ways that you can use things to increase your family wealth for multiple generations and pass it down to your heirs like this property was passed down to us. What was also passed down to us was the will to survive, the will to fight, the will to do what was right and maybe your mom ain't raised you like that to do what was right. Mine did. And so it's a sin and a shame before God to know right and then not to do it. So the thing is, this is the right time. It is the right hour for us as people of African descent in North America, and in particular, Gullah Geechee, right here in the Gullah Geechee Nation, from Jacksonville, Jacksonville, and thing like that, that and this year, please, it's only they call it dual country, see all and all of that. Golden Isles, all of that. Coastal Empire, all of this year. Northern Florida, all of this year. It is our time 
to take responsibility for who we be. It ain't about just putting no t-shirt on that say Gullah Geechee and we be Gullah Geechee and everybody and their grandma now on Instagram got Gullah Geechee. When I first got on Instagram, I was the only one with the name Gullah Geechee. Now I got to find my own name. It's not about just simply having Gullah Geechee on embossed on a shirt. It has to be embossed in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit and live the culture, not modernize it. If you modernize it, it becomes something else. And, and what I mean by that is you are gentrifying your own community when you say, I ain't got to crack my teeth like that, but I, I'm Gullah Geechee now. I, I am, and I want to live in one of those new places. You can, but why not live in a new place on the land that your ancestors left you? Why buy into somebody else's debt with a mortgage? Why let them auction you again? Because you know the day you can't pay, they're going to take it back. Right? You realize that with a mortgage, your name don't go in there. That's why people have deed burning parties because mortgage burning parties so that when they burn the mortgage, they get the deed. But you won't have to have that party if you celebrate right now who we be for truth, which means living this legacy. It means holding upon the land, holding upon who we be. We have the social responsibility to do that. Charleston, South Carolina is celebrating its 350th. Do you even know what that number is? Meaning 350 years ago, Charlestown became the place of enslavement of black gold. The place to which the black cargo was shipped, sold at Gadsden's Wharf after being released from the bondage on Sullivan's Island. Brought down river, sold a commodity and made others rich. It's time for us to enrich ourselves spiritually, mentally, physically, and protect this your land where we be. For we and for the chilling chilling will come and hide me. It is our Gullah Geechee social responsibility. So please write letters to Charleston County Council. Write emails to Charleston County Council. Let them know, do not vote for alternative one for Highway 41. Tell them to reject that alternative that runs through native Gullah Geechee communities. Tell them that is unacceptable. That if they want to improve the road, either find another place where it's not going to remove and displace more native Gullah Geechees and ruin their quality of life, tell them take no action if necessary. But that this action is not one for which you will stand. Tomorrow night, 5 p.m., Beaufort County, South Carolina, Burton Wells Complex, be there masked up, be there sanitized. If you cannot come and you definitely don't want to put your life at risk personally, I hope a bunch of y'all ain't around there really. I mean, the, the more distance people are away from me tomorrow night, the happier I'll be. I'm going to be honest with you. But it's worth me putting my life on the line again because my life been on the line many times before now, before Corona, for the same thing, for fighting for we land. Let a bounty on my head, fighting for we land. Because we cannot sit back and don't take a stand. So if you can't attend or won't attend, follow Gullah Geechee Nation fan page on Facebook. We have been told because some of our partners of the Gullah Geechee Sustainability Think Tank wrote a letter on all of our behalf with the various environmental organizations that have stood up against this destruction in a Bay Point to say that it's unfair for this Board of Zoning Appeal meeting to be held tomorrow night and people not have a chance to interact and to give their comments. So they are going to provide a Facebook feed over the Beaufort County, South Carolina Facebook page. We are going to share that page onto our page at the Gullah Geechee Nation, but you can also go find Beaufort County's page and make sure that you comment throughout that meeting 
and they will capture those comments in opposition to the Bay Point proposal and opposition to the sand mining on the Fusky proposal and state that you want Chester Williams to recuse himself from voting on Bay Point. There is also a change.org petition to sign that Buford County needs to have Chester Williams recuse himself from voting on Bay Point due to conflict of interest. Remember I said folks can't be getting paid and working on the same project that they got paid for. You're going to vote on whether the project can go forward when you are ready paid to work for the people who put in the project up. That is called a clear conflict of interest. Well, there is a change.org petition that shows that one of the members of the Beaufort County Board of Zoning Appeal works for the destruction air company that's being called Bay Point Six Senses. So, he shouldn't be voting about whether or not this should be permitted. Everybody else needs to be voting and they need to be voting in opposition to this luxury resort that's been greenwashed as ecotourism. Ecotourism would be for Hunter to meet me right down here on up to this show, right, jump and thing like that. And we go out in my battle board and thing like that for look wrong. And we can we camera and thing for tech picture. We can how we cast net and thing for guino go some shrimp and all that kind of thing. A true rod and real out Jonah and bring on our fish and all of that kind of thing and guino on back. We don't have to build anything to go on tour in this environment. That's ecotourism. The rest of it is destruction net. Building on areas that are already eroding away, that are underwater with every king tide. It's unacceptable. And now is the time that we have to stand up, speak up, and if you ain't counted, at least be accountable. It's our social responsibility. We owe that to our elders and our ancestors. Many who are elderly now, and they got to look at things like this, they were seeing more clearly before they started wearing eyeglass because they saw with this. And they saw a time such as this coming and they wanted the quality of life for themselves as they got older to be great, but they even more than that wanted to be great for us. So now we need to make sure that it's great for those in the future. So I thank all of you who have supported Zooming In on Sustainability. And I hope you'll continue to do that. I want to thank all of you who have continued to contribute to the Gullah Geechee Land Legacy Fund. If you go to GoFundMe, you will find that fund there. Just put in Gullah Geechee Land Legacy Fund. It'll pop right up. We want to thank all of you who donated there. We want to thank everyone who has donated to be a cash app. You just go dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation. And again, Gullah is G-U-L-L-A-H. G double -E, -E -E, N -A -T -I -O -N. So e then nation n a t i o n so dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation and you can donate via Cash App at any given time any amount every dollar does count and so go to GoFundMe for the Gullah Geechee Land and Legacy Fund we reached our 20k threshold finally and next month is Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Awareness Month this month is National Rice Month. So you want to know we the nam from plenty rice and things like that. So that's another reason we have to protect this your land. Because as long as we take care of Mother Earth and not your sheep, she not your wheat. Okay. And so definitely next month, all month, we will be celebrating our land legacy. We will be celebrating our resistance, our community, our culture. We will be having another telethon on Saturday, October the 24th. So mark your calendars now and make sure that if you are not already following us on one of those mechanisms, follow us today. Either GullahGeecheeNation.com, that's our website, that's our blog, and every activity we're doing, protests or parties, gets posted there. That you can support also all the businesses, all of our official native Gullah Geechee owned and operated businesses and institutions, nonprofit organizations, we list them there because there's stuff with Gullah Geechee name on it now that ain't ours. 
And so if you definitely want to be responsible to us and with us, you support them who the Gullah Geechee for truth, not the other rest of people that make money off of we men. You see? And so definitely follow GullahGeecheeNation.com. Subscribe to GullahGeechee.tv. A free. Subscribe to GullahGeechee.tv. And you can keep up with the broadcast. We will be filming and we'll be broadcasting the meetings that are coming up that was just mentioned. Also, you can follow at Gullah Geechee on Twitter and Instagram for by the minute kind of stuff on Twitter. All right. And also Gullah Geechee Nation has a Facebook fan page, as does Gullah Geechee TV, as does the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition. The Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition is the premier advocacy organization for Gullah Geechee human rights, land rights, and water rights. I'm the founder of the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition. It is open to members around the world. So you do not have to live in the Gullah Geechee Nation or be a native Gullah Geechee to be a member, to say, I want to help make sure that Gullah Geechee culture continues to exist in the future and that Gullah Geechee people remain on their land. So I want to say thank you, thank you to all the Hunter children who done joined me this year, yeah, because we had a massive boost and membership this year, ever since Juneteenth going forward to this time. So if you'd like to learn more about the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition, go to Gullah Geechee.net, Gullah Geechee.net. And if you'd like to join, you'd like to pay for membership online, go to Gullah Geechee.biz, Gullah Geechee.biz. And that last link, Gullah Geechee.biz is also where you can get merchandise, books and CDs and DVDs, but also t-shirts. And those t-shirts right now that we have that will also contribute to the Gullah Geechee Land Legacy Fund are the Save Bay Point t-shirts. They are here, we have them available, we'll have them on tomorrow night and you'll see the pictures with us with them on. But we, we plan to win tomorrow night, but that doesn't mean the work will be done. We then still need to protect this land in perpetuity. So the work will continue, it'll just shift gears. So definitely, if you go ahead and buy those shirts, those funds will go back into the Gullah Geechee Land Legacy Fund. So again, go to Gullah Geechee.biz, G-U-L-L-A-H-G-E-E-C-H-E-E. -E -E. Ain't no I in Geechee for the week. Gullah Geechee.biz. So follow us on the various social media. Follow us at Gullah Geechee Nation.com. Support Gullah Geechee.biz and then Hunter the Support Week and Hunter can keep up with what is going on so that you can take action, but take it and be socially responsible. We want you to do things responsibly. That are all of what we mama them learn we. Okay? So we grown at grown. Grown folk take responsibility. So make sure, fill out that census, Register to vote. Yesterday was the U.S. National Registration Voter Registration Day. So I hope you took advantage of that. If you didn't, you got time, go ahead, get registered, learn how do you get your mail-in ballot now, because they are about to close all those things down. Another thing for Beaufort County, beyond the meeting tomorrow night, that will also close down right after that land auction. Again, pay your land tax right now. Like today, when you get, stop listening to me, or why do you listen to me? Go and pay your land tax. You can pay online in Beaufort County. You go on and pay online, but definitely pay that land tax so your land is not auctioned off. Your family land is not auctioned off. If you got a family member that collects the money and pays for all of you every year, call them and make sure it's paid because otherwise your name about to come out in the paper in the next week because they about to auction it off. But now, after they finish with, all that, you also got to deal with this. It's going on already now. There have been several meetings, and we have posted at GullahGeecheeNation.com a whole list of things in Beaufort County that you can fill out. These two petitions, Stop the Destruction Men at Bay Point, and also the petition uh, to protect the Fusky. But there's also the Beaufort Comprehensive Plan that every 10 years, the Beaufort County, Beaufort County Comprehensive Plan comes up for review. Every county has a comprehensive plan that under different names. Beaufort County is a place that is mostly sea islands, 
So now that a lot of this area has started to suburbanize, people are recognizing the value of keeping your water quality and the way that you keep it is not to urbanize and not to continue to suburbanize, not to continue to put gated areas and resorts and build them right up into the marsh and onto the ocean. So they have both a green plant plan a green plant plan and an economic development plan for the Beaufort County Comprehensive Plan. So that's why you heard me with all these terms in there. So it's the Beaufort County Comprehensive Plan that's being reviewed now, but it has these two components, the green print and the economic plan. So they have surveys that you can fill out, but those surveys all require you to get the details in before October the 9th. So we're running into the auction and running right into the deadline for that as well. Make sure you get your input in on those and also get those letters off to Charleston County Council before their October meetings so that as they begin to deliberate on these matters, you're aware. As far as James Island goes, there's going to be a meeting in December for the town of James Island which is in Charleston County, South Carolina, but it's an incorporated area, to determine whether or not they will declare a climate emergency declaration for their town, which means putting resources into combating climate change issues and dynamics. But the biggest resource to combating any and all of this is us. Do we value ourselves? Do we value our own knowledge, wisdom, understanding, intellect, abilities, training. If we do, there's something you can do. Because some people say on me all the time, oh, but I feel so overwhelmed and I don't think there's anything I could do. I don't know how I can help. You can help by signing a petition. You can help by not throwing garbage out the window of your car. You can help by cleaning up areas when you do see debris around. There's a lot of ways that you can help. You can help to say, I don't want anybody else to build anything right into the marsh, into the ocean. There's something you can do. You can write a letter. It, trust me. <laughs> you see how people write nowadays? So it doesn't have to reach perfection. <laughs> but <laughs> express yourself. Make it clear this is how you feel about the issue. Come out or type out on Facebook tomorrow night. Type out your comments, but engage. This is about social justice, and it's about social responsibility. We take care of us. It's going to take care of we. So I want to say thank you, thank you once again to our partners over at the University of Minnesota, the CREATE program. And I know now y'all say over there, I'm part of you now. Yes, I'm officially Professor Queen Quetta at the University of Minnesota. And I want to definitely thank Kaylee for who's behind the scenes, who helps me with this every week and is my engineer. And we just appreciate all of you and appreciate all the comments that you send, not only in the chat while we're here, but also the comments that you send via email. And y'all can always email to G U L L. G-E-E-C-O at AOL.com. Yes, that's retro. But everybody know if they get that email, that Queen Quet and them at the Gullah Geezer Seattle Coalition. See, that's how long we've been out you. We out you. Okay, look y'all. So again, G-U-L-L-G-E-E-C-O at AOL.com. And again, you can always find us at GullahGeecheeNation.com and GullahGeechee.net. And you can send us emails and let us know if there's any other way that you want to participate and be active in taking social responsibility for who we be and this your land what they upon the sea. We have to get together and help one another see this your thing clearly it already 2020. If we ain't going to see them now, when we get shown. Okay? We have to stand up, take a stand for our land. Please continue to donate at GoFundMe at the Gullah Geechee Land and Legacy Fund or dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation via Cash App. We appreciate every donation, every contribution. And I just want to thank everyone as well who's been watching the programs and really staying tuned and getting involved because we have a workshop coming up about sea level rise in the Sea Islands. It's sold out. So if you were intending to register for it, 
and you didn't go to Eventbrite and sign up in time, just go to Eventbrite and follow us from there. So you'll see when we do the next one, we'll do another one in the first quarter of the new year. But definitely Dan Riz of Climate Central, you all saw him here on the broadcast. He and his team are going to be working with us with the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition to host that as we open up Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Awareness Month at the beginning of October. But I just wanted to let all of my viewers know that if you're trying to go last minute, you might as well don't go. It's sold out. So you can get ready and get geared up so that when we have the next one, that you're already there following the Eventbrite links and you'll see it whenever we announce that we're having another activity. And we're going to have a number of activities throughout October. But mark down Saturday, October the 24th at noon. Lock that in your calendar because we're going to have another telethon. We're going to have a big celebration for Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Awareness Month. We're going to do that. And, but all month long, if you follow our social media, we're going to be posting a number of things to make you more aware because we appreciate those of you who really care. So I hope to see many of you tomorrow night here in Beaufort County at Burton Wells, 5 p.m. And we are going to stop this destruction on Defusky and at Bay Point. Y'all know who this shall be. This year, the Queen Quet Head Pundit Body of the Gullah Geechee Nation, founder of the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition. We gonna keep up the fight because it only right. As Gullah Geechee, we gotta act and be responsible for all this your land we're in the sea. So thank you, thank you for Yeti me talking about the Gullah Geechee as social responsibility. Y'all stay safe and read of us. Be healthy. Keep up the fight. Peace and blessings, everybody. <laughs>